from Colonial Life Arena in Columbia, South Carolina. It's women's college basketball and a Wednesday matinee as the South Carolina Gamecocks play host to the Chanticleers of Coastal Carolina. I'm Dave Weinstein alongside the former Gamecock, Brett Ball. Final non-conference tune-up for both teams before conference play begins. South Carolina, they remain undefeated. Coastal Carolina got off to a slow start this season, but they've taken four of their last five, and Brett, now they have the number one team in the country. Absolutely right, Dave. And you said this is the seventh time this team has met, and South Carolina and both teams are closing out non-conference play with this matchup. South Carolina, again, continues to dominate on both sides of the basketball, leading the nation in blocks at 9.7 blocks for a game, and they also have cleaned up their offense really in the last four games, only averaging 13.7 turnovers. And so as Carolina continues to do that, they also add a new addition, newest members to their team in Chloe Kitts. Um, but for Coastal Carolina, their key is to slow them down and limit paint production. But Coach made it clear before that their team wants to play in this game and they want to play in this type of environment. Well, South Carolina dominated Charleston Southern on Sunday with Talaysia Cooper who had a career high in points. Talaysia Cooper, she's not a starter, but she's someone you want to keep her eye on. She played in the last nine games, long, athletic, competitive, McDonald's All-American. She's someone that will see a lot of minutes. She made her mark on the stat sheet last game with 14 points, five of eight shooting, three assists, and three steals. And she just wants someone that you want to keep her eye on for her entire career here at Carolina. Coastal Carolina a winner on Sunday as well over UNC Wilmington. It was Asia Blunt who continued her strong play. Asia Blunt, 6'3", Restart Jr., leading the leading this leading score for us with 17 points, eight rebounds per game, shooting 58 from the field. Last year she was all Suns belt first team and second in the conference in scoring. She's an experienced player, smart. She's the engine to this team and she's gonna be the key to get them going and keeping them in the game. South Carolina checks in at 11-0 overall. They're 6-0 here inside Colonial Life Arena. Coastal 5-5, but they are 0-5 away from home, looking for their first road victory of the season. What a victory it would be if it comes against the number one team in the country. Brett, this is the fourth Power 5 game of the season for Coastal Carolina, so they're not intimidated coming in. Absolutely, you're right. And then they've seen looks of the lights, and Coach said, hey, those are the type of games that prepare you for non-conference play, prepare you for James Madison coming up in, the, in conference play. An early offensive rebound for Aaliyah Boston. And South Carolina will set up their half-court offense. Fletcher inside the arc, connects. There she is, Kiara Fletcher. Fle Fletcher, she's just been the leader on the team in the point guard position, just being a floor general and being able to see the floor and knock down those shots. Richardson gives way to Freeman. Aaron Freeman runs the show for Coastal Carolina. Here's Barney. And Saxton with the steal for the Gamecocks. Against Ricarte, Saxton draws the foul. Nice play in transition by Victoria Saxton. Saxton, the senior forward from Rome, Georgia. Two points, one rebound in each of her last two games. It'll be the first foul on Ricarte. Taria had a season high, 11 points, five rebounds in the opener against ETSU. Foul from Ricarte. She hits the second, so it's a 3 0 lead for the Gamecocks. Richardson. Now Barney. Postal averages 73.6 points per game. This is your player to watch in blunt. The defense is there from Aaliyah Boston. And now the Gamecocks look to push. Bree Beal inside, off the glass and in. Nice smart play by Bree Beal to just give a little pump fake, recognize that the defense was coming on her backside and just being patient and finishing the layup. Gamecocks got off to a big lead against Charleston Southern on Sunday. They led 33-3 at one point. I'd love for that to happen again today. 
Postal, a little bit of a tougher assignment for the Gamecocks. And there's the first basket of the game for the Shana Clears. It's Aaron Freeman, sophomore guard from Little Rock, Arkansas. Freeman, Coach talked about, she's just one of those players that you want to have on your team. She's hard working, as you can see now. She's just continuing to move, move in the zone again and just be present for her team. Cook can't hit from the corner, but an offensive rebound for Boston. And the easy putback. Now Bree Beal the other way for the game. Pax leading seven at two. Beal for three. She's short. The rebound tracked down by Deasia Richardson. Freeman for three. who's been hot the last several games for South Carolina. Fletcher, again inside the arc, runs it in. Nice shot by Fletcher. She, again, she just has a nice mid-range game, and she's very calculated with her shot. She doesn't take very many, but she makes sure that she looks inside first, and hey, if she's open, she's ready to knock it down. She grad transfer from Georgia Tech. Did not score against Charleston Southern. Looking for the home run pass to Saxton and said it's a turnover. <laughs> She she did, did not score Brett against Charleston Southern. She left early in the third with an injury, but seems to be okay. She's back out here on a Wednesday. Right. She definitely, whatever happened, she definitely seemed like she's coming back to, to be herself and to play her game. She patted herself on the chest uh, in that pass um, turnover against Victoria Saxon because she had the right idea, just couldn't get the ball to connect. Unable to connect on the shot, it's Amaya Adams. And so here's Zaya Cook on the drive. Again, nice aggressive play by Zaya Cook. She just has that ability to recognize the defense and take advantage of what the defense is given in that instance was to take it to the basket. First points for Cook. The Gamecocks are four for seven from the field so far. Feed to Adams. And now this is Carter. She's double teamed. Adams. Will be Gamecock basketball. A lot of substitutions early on for Coastal Carolina. They brought on virtually an entire second unit. Inside, this is Boston. Great, just strong finish by Leah Boston. Her doing her usual when she gets the ball in the gets the ball in the paint in that area. She's really just hard to stop. Four points, four rebounds midway through the first quarter for Leah Boston. Carter. You know, she was bothered defensively by Saxton. A turnover. That was a nice aggressive play by Carter, though. You know, you could just see all those Coastal Carolina jerseys continue to crash the paint and crash the boards and find themselves in the paint, just like they're doing now on the offensive and defensive side. And we're going to have a reach in foul. It's going to be called on Bree Beal, her first. And now, once again, it's, it's substitution five for Coastal Carolina. It looks like it's a different, type, different five from the starters. This actually is the starting unit back in. Is it the same? Okay, yep. yeah, number four, three. Yep. For Coastal Carolina. Aaron Freeman on the drive. Against Fletcher, she converts. Nice, aggressive move. And those are the type of drives that you have to take against Carolina. You cannot be scared to go to the basket. Once you make up your mind, you got to keep your head on the prize and finish. Cook trains the three. three. Nice three by Zaya Cook. Again, we all know that she has the capability of shooting that shot. And looks like Carolina's doing the same thing, getting a nice, fresh new unit out there. Gamecocks are hot early. They're 7 for 10 from the field. 4.50 to go in the first quarter. South Carolina leads Coastal Carolina 16 to 4. Well, this is the last game before the Christmas break for both teams, and it's ugly sweater day here in Columbia. And South Carolina coaching staff certainly gotten into the holiday spirit. <laughs> Indeed, there's no question 
that the holiday spirit is resting upon that huddle right there. I mean, they have gone all out, and I love it. This is just uh, um, this is a great look, and it's a great, no question about it, they're in the Christmas spirit. <laughs> the Gamecocks are in the offensive spirit so far, an 11-2 run in the last three minutes and 18 seconds, has them out to a 16-4 lead. And great shooting, Brett, so far, seven for 10. Yeah, seven for 10 again, and these are been great looks um, that you've gotten from uh, Fletcher early on, Zaya Cook, and again, of course, Aaliyah Boston doing her usual in the paint. Again, it looks like Carolina are just, um, just playing their game and getting the ball to the right people at the right time and finishing it in the right way. For Coastal Carolina, they've already used 10 players. We saw Coach Patterson pull the starting five, bring in five reserves, right. and then starting five came right back in a couple of minutes later. Right. And you know, obviously coaches have different reasons for doing that. Sometimes it's just to give different looks for our, or to run a different uh, defense, depending on, you know, personnel or just to run a different offense for run a different offense for their team. So we'll be interested to in see how that substitution plays out through the rest of this game. Some pressure from the Gamecocks. Shots are able to break it. This is Barney in the corner. She's short. Cardozo, and a turnover as there's a new five on the floor as well for the Gamecocks. Richardson can't hit. Now Bree Hall the other way for South Carolina. Hall takes it herself high off the glass. Second chance is there for Cardozo. Again, nice follow up by Cardozo. Richardson. Off the mark, there's Blunt fighting in the paint, and Asia Blunt gets the basket for Coastal Carolina. Brett, your player to watch. Yes, nice finish by Blunt, and then that comes from the outside, the, from the guards being willing to shoot, and Blunt just being in a great position. Terrific feed from Cooper to Cardozo. Yes, Cooper is, we talked about her before. Again, just having really good court awareness, building up her IQ for college play. I mean, again, she's just done really, really well in her minutes. Been very productive in her minutes on the floor. Richardson on the drive, has it swatted by Cardozo. That's a tough matchup for Richardson going 5-9 against Cardozo, who is 6-7. There's not a lot of height on this roster for Coastal Carolina, just two players that are six feet and above, one exactly six foot, and then they're starting center, Ricarte goes 6-2. That's it, everyone else under six feet tall. But you know, Coach talked about their grit before, how hardworking they are. And you can tell that they're not intimidated to drive into the paint and get that contact. They're also not intimidated to shoot. And that's what they're going to need, that type of mindset for this game. Raven Johnson, who we did not see on Sunday against CSU. Tisha Meher on the floor as well. We didn't see her against the Buccaneers. Johnson for three. No good. Offensive rebound for Cooper. Has to hurry. Gonna be a shot clock violation. I don't think she realized the, the shot clock on that on that possession, but <clears throat> that, those are shots that Johnson in the corner that she should be able to knock down and will be able to. This postal offense. They like to shoot the three. One third of their shots this season are from behind the arc. But they'll run their offense through Blunt in the post as well. That's Ricarte, no good, and Cooper will look to push. Three on one for the Gamecocks, she feeds Hall. Nice defense from Ricarte. Cooper. Nice aggressive play, again, keeping her head up, seeing the three on one, making a decision early, and again, just following the shot. Blunt for three, and it's blocked by Cardozo. Now up ahead, Johnson feeds Cardozo from nice easy basket. Pass. Nice pass. Great decision by Johnson to, to, to toss it up to Cardozo for her to finish. Johnson and Cardozo play extremely well together. They played AAU together. Johnson fighting on the floor. Jump ball is called. Possession arrow in favor of the Chanticleers. There's really been some nice, good transition possessions for Carolina. Another look at the transition basket for the Gamecocks. It's a great read of the defense. 
So and in that case, Johnson could have taken it all the way, but with, Car with Cardoso also moving, it's just easier to toss it up to her. Well, they got it inside to Belinga, <laughs> but Cardozo said no. <laughs> yeah. Belinga now playing the five, but she gives up seven inches to Cardozo. And there's a steal for Ami here. Up ahead, Letitia Ami here. Great finish by Ami here. And she just has a long athletic stride. Even when she goes for a layup, there's a little, like a slight little pause to tuck the ball and to keep it away from the defense. But great finish by Ami here. Senior forward from Ontario. Quick hands that time from Ami here. We're going to have a foul called on Coastal Carolina. It's Ricarte. That's her second. Ricarte, one of the two bigs for Coastal, going 6-2 and early two fouls. And she'll have to sit. Hall stops, kicks it out to Johnson. And me here, spin move, off the glass and in. Nice, just aggressive play, reading the defense, and just a nice, look, long, athletic body, just making an athletic move for a finish. Four points for me here. Shot no good for Belinga. Raven Johnson keeps the dribble, draws the foul. Outstanding ball control from the point guard for South Carolina. <laughs> Foul's going to be on Amaya Adams, her first. <laughs> Coach Pedersen in his first season having a chat with Belinga. Pedersen's a coaching veteran in the state of South Carolina, comes to Coastal with 21 years of head coaching experience. Most of that at Lander University, his previous 17 seasons at Lander on the D2 level. Ton of success there. Cooper for three. That's good. There she is, Cooper. Again, just being ready to shoot, calling for the ball. Again, being in a position to knock that, ball, knock that shot down. That's a great look for her. It's a 30 to six lead. Barney can't answer. Barney, one of the top three-point shooters for Coach Pedersen. And that's a great shot for Barney. I mean, she had open looks, just can't get them to connect. Fouls going to be called on Letitia and me here, her first. Inside to Blunt. Barney for three. Off the mark. Shooting woes continue for Coastal Carolina. Coastal now three for 22. Hall for three. Cardozo. And that'll take us to the end of the first quarter. An 18 to two run to end the quarter. South Carolina leads Coastal Carolina, 30 to six. Future Gamecock looking on. South Carolina leads Coastal Carolina 30 to six as we start the second quarter. And Brett, the player of the quarter for the Gamecocks was Camila Cardozo played the second half of the first. Six points, three rebounds, three blocks. I mean, Cardozo, again, extremely active. What we've expected out of her and what she really have done um, in the last couple games for uh, Carolina. She's contributing with the blocks, contributing to um, Carolina leading the nation in blocks. And what we talked about early in the game, uh, she's second in the team and fourth in the SEC for rebounding at 8.5 per game. So again, she's getting her start early. And again, this is the presence that her team is going to need for her um, throughout well, with wrapping up non-conference play, but definitely need to see this in conference play. And you mentioned leading the nation in blocks. Conversely, Coastal, they don't block many shots. They have just 16 blocks in the season. To put that in perspective, Brie Beal has 20. Camila Cardozo coming into today has 17, so she now is 20. Aaliyah Boston, 17 coming into today. So each of those three game clocks has more blocks individually than the entire Chanticleers team combined. <laughs> And there's Kitts right away in the second quarter. Right away. And again, I'm, I'm pretty sure she's going to be added to that block, block list as she continued to develop her freshman year. 
Kitts was impressive in her debut on Sunday against CSU. Here she is tracking down the rebound. Freshman forward from Florida. Sanaya Fagan, nice move, can't convert. But another opportunity for South Carolina. Watkins was calling for it in the post. Now they get it to her. This is from close range. It's a nice seal, good finish. It was a, somewhat of a, a size mismatch there, but we know that those are shots that Watkins can finish. This is Helena De La Ruelle, backup point guard from France. She puts a move on Watkins. Beyonce Carter is rejected. <laughs> That's Ashlyn Watkins. Great defensive play. I guess she said, hey, if I can't score, you won't either. Watkins, 6'3", freshman from right here in Columbia, South Carolina. Blocking the 5'11", Carter. Richardson ran out of room, but finds Blunt. It's deflected by Fagan. Freeman is all over Cook. I love the aggressive play. Again, she's just one that has really kept the team going with her energy, her drive, her open looks, her defense. Aaron Freeman, fun player to watch. Chloe Kitts draws the foul. It's going to be called on Anaya Barney, her first. Chloe Kitts will head to the line. That's where she found her first collegiate point on Sunday against CSU. It was a free throw. Chloe, the number 17 recruit in the class of 2023, but she chose to enroll early. Join the team on December 13th. Averaged 18.7 points and 8.2 rebounds last season. Playing in Daytona Beach, Florida. In and out on the second. Now the speedy Freeman. Spin move, turnaround is good. Great play. And you said it right, Dave, Speedy Freeman. She's really just been moving the entire game. Again, she's been really great defensive play by Coastal Carolina. But Freeman, she's definitely been able to be the four general, getting her teammates open shots. And again, she's been shooting from the outside. She's been driving to the basketball. She's uh, driving to the basket. She's just been everywhere for Coastal Carolina for this game. Second in the team in points and rebounds. First in assists and steals. This is Richardson. Too strong. Whose ball is it? It's South Carolina's ball. Gamecocks with a 32 to eight lead here. 7.48 to go in the second quarter. Some pressure from Coastal Carolina. Zaya Cook is playing the point right now. She drives in the paint, feeds Watkins. Nice drive, again, good basketball IQ. Just seeing the open man as she's drawing the defense. Well, the defense from Fagan affected that shot from Carter. Carter thought she had the easy layup. 6-3 body of Fagan's really got in her way. And Carter's actually done a good, pretty good job of crashing the boards. Um, the rebounds that Carolina have gotten, have received thus far, have gotten, it hasn't been easy. Coach Staley in her 15th season here in Columbia, two national championships. This is Freeman against Kitts. Freeman makes her move. Nice move. Great move by Freeman. Again, what we talked about before, she's just been so active and unafraid to go into the land of giants. And when you're not afraid, you get rewarded when you finish. And she's definitely done that for her team. And we asked Coach Pedersen about Freeman on a phone call yesterday. He said she works hard for us every day. One of the captains is a sophomore and a 3.9 student off the court. He said as good as she is on the court, she's even better off of it. Easy finish from Watkins. He said if we get her shot more consistent, she'll be unguardable because even South Carolina doesn't have anyone as quick as she is. Here's Blunt. Yeah, we've definitely seen her quickness throughout this game thus far. 
so fast. You can use your speed in a number of ways. Ariel Vadrell Balinga checks back in for Coastal Carolina. She replaces Asia Blunt. Blunt's the primary scorer for this team, double digits in all but one game this season. Five 20 point performances. They'd love to get her going. They trail 36 to 10. She's off the floor right now. Adams lost it. It's gonna be Gamecock basketball. More pressure from Coastal. Cook is able to break it. Here comes Zaya Cook. Fagan, an offensive rebound. Watkins again inside. It's almost coast to coast uh, from Zaya Cook. Again, staying in the play. And Watkins moving into position where she can receive the ball. Finish the play for Carolina. Watkins has six. Oh, the rejection from Fagan. And now a travel will be called on Coastal Carolina. Coastal really struggling offensively, just five for 30, but credit the defense of South Carolina. They've affected a lot of shots. Yeah, the defense have definitely rattled their offense. I mean, with their long bodies, um, playing man to man, they're often just shooting the gap, getting the steals, and really scoring a lot in transition. Watkins from the foul line, and one. Nice pull up shot from Watkins, nice shot. Talking about Watkins says we want her to be dominant. Called her a work in progress. Progress, excuse me, incredibly gifted skill-wise. We've seen her be great around the basket, and, and Dawn said we're not going to limit her. We want her to do it all: rebound, push, score, be aggressive. Said she's never had a freshman as physically prepared for the rigors of college basketball like she is. Yeah, and you can definitely tell it's, it's showing up to finish by Fagan. 42 to 10 lead for the Gamecocks. Freeman, tough shot, and she nice hits. Shot. Nice shot by Freeman. Again, just she's determined to score. She's going to get that ball in the basket by all means necessary, and you got to enjoy a player like that on your team. And she draws the charge on Watkins. Doing it all. Yeah, she is. She's covering every part of the stat sheet. And as we talked about before, Coach, as you mentioned before, um, how active and how fast she is and how, again, she's valuable to the team and how she just works hard. And when you're committed to working hard, you will find yourself, first of all, having a lot of minutes, and you'll find yourself covering the stat sheet at some way or another. On well, substitution five for the Gamecocks, Johnson and me here, Boston, Saxton, and Paul now on the floor. Midway through the second quarter, leading 42 to 12. Here's Freeman, trying to find a sliver of space. Richardson, her shot is blocked by Ami here. Now Boston leads the rush. Looking for Boston inside, she's double teamed, converts anyway. Good finish by Boston. Again, her doing her usual. Good help side defense by, by Adams, but it was just a little too late. Boston coming off a 10.13 rebound performance on Sunday against CSU, her 67th career double-double. Aaron Freeman. Tried to get it to Adams. Instead, it's a turnover. Gamecocks have made their last four shots. Great aggressive defense by Coastal. Adams with the steal. She is rejected by Aaliyah Boston. <laughs> that brings the crowd to life here inside Colonial Life Arena. <laughs> Definitely crowd to life. And it also brings us to immediate timeout. Another look at the rejection from Boston denying Amaya Adams. All South Carolina in the second quarter. And welcome back inside Colonial Life Arena. 3.53 left to go in the second quarter. Don Staley's Gamecocks lead Coastal Carolina 44 to 12. And Brett, in the break, you mentioned to me the bench points. 
heavily in favor of South Carolina. Yeah, and we talked about that before. That's been really kind of the narrative of the season, their depth. Um, just again, been a hot topic and has not disappointed. 26 points from USC bench. Um, and again, accounting for actually half, over half of the Carolina points that they have now. And again, when you have the number one team in the nation, you have those reserves who are ready to come in and play, who are ready to, who are ready to again, continue to move the game in the rhythm that is supposed to go in and is um, it's great when you can substitute players and the game continues to flow there's no disruption in the game and credits to the coaching staff to knowing who to put in the game at what time and and with whom you know which units to play with whom given the defense they're given so um, again bench points bench depth is uh, continues just to be a narrative for South Carolina. Well, 11 different Gamecocks have scored for coach Staley South Carolina, Carolina, excuse me, leads in bench points 26 to nothing. Just two players for Coastal Carolina on the score sheet. This one who has the ball, had the ball, now she does again. Freeman has 10 of the 12 points for the shots. Blunt has the other two. Nice move by Carter. Just again, she's been working hard all game in that area and just could not get it to connect, but it looks like she's finally gathered herself and be able to read the defense, and not only that, she's able to finish. Carter, the senior forward from Belleville, Illinois. That was called on um, De La Ruel, her first. Boston, checked by Blunt. The two stars going one on one. Boston missed the first shot, Saxton hits the second. Nice follow up cleanup shot by, by Saxton. Good shot. Freeman, again, not surprised at all. She's been working her butt off this entire game and just been everywhere on driving, now shooting the three. Freeman has 13. She's six for nine from the field. Shantz has a team just eight for 35. Ami here kicks it out to Hall. Instead, it's Johnson in the corner. Short, but the offensive rebound from Ami here in the easy putback. Again, like you said, easy. She made that look so easy. Good finish by Ami here. Gamecocks have been clinical off the glass. Beyonce Carter, now Freeman. They get it inside to Blunt. Instead, it's Carter, a whistle. And that's going to go against Coastal Carolina. Deasia Richardson picks up her first. Kira Fletcher checking back in for South Carolina. She replaces Raven Johnson, so Fletcher will run the point. And they break pressure. Saxton splits two shots and she'll draw the foul. Beyonce Carter picks up her first. So Victoria Saxton will head to the line. A team captain the last four years. Yeah, Saxton, she's just one of those solid players that you can depend on. Again, someone that is has a very, very high basketball IQ and can finish at the basket. Averaging 4.2 points per game this season. She just scored a ton. Her high is 20 points against Mercer in the 2021 tournament. 14 rebounds against North Carolina in the 2022 tournament. So she's a player who really steps it up in March. For sure, yeah, she's definitely, and she has, a, she's a, has so much experience. The tournament with postseason play. And again, like you said, just a leader on the floor and off the floor, just a dependable, solid player. Just invaluable. Comes up with the rebound. And now it's Bree Hall. Two on two. Defense. 
Fletcher on the drive. Off the glass, no good. Boston draws the foul. And Aaliyah Boston will head to the line for South Carolina. It was a great read by Fletcher. Uh, she thought she was going to pass him inside, but the way the paint just opened up for her. Just got to give it a finish, but good thing Boston was there to clean it up. It's the second foul on Beyonce Carter. And Aaliyah Boston to the line. A 74% free throw shooter coming into today. Boston led the nation with a program record 30 double doubles last year, now 67 for her career. In and out on the first. A player with an endless list of accolades, preseason All-American, SEC Player of the Year, two-time National Player of the Year. Rattles in the second. Three-time Lisa Leslie Center of the Year. And the list continues to go on and on. Honda Cup winner. Again, um, it just shows, again, when you work hard. And she's you know, been an inspiration for other girls who want to start and play basketball. They know what's possible. You know. There she is defensively, hoping to add number one pick in the WNBA draft to that <laughs> list of accolades. I definitely think that's a possibility. <laughs> Under a minute remaining in the second. Freeman, shot's no good, and here's Boston. Me here gets it inside to Boston. Had position on Blunt. Nice. Wouldn't we even call that a not even a pick and roll, but just a, a, a nice move by both me here in Boston. And Boston also getting the position too to receive the ball, realizing where she was, taking a little step, and or taking taking a little pump fake, and then finishing. And Blunt's a player who dominates inside, and she averages 17 and a half, 8.7 rebounds. She's a strong player, but giving up height to Boston. Ricarte, no good. No time for a last second heave from Kiera Fletcher, but Brett, a dominant first half for South Carolina. They lead 53 to 17. Yeah, absolutely dominant first half. Like we talked about before, the bench coming in with um, being able to put points on the basket, put points on the board, and also not only that, just finishing in transition. Gamecock shoots 60 percent in the half. They lead Coastal Carolina 53 to 17 from Columbia. It's halftime here in Columbia. South Carolina leads Coastal Carolina 53 to 17. And Brett, when we talked with Coach Pedersen about the matchup with the Gamecocks, he said, look, you're going up against the clear number one in the nation. We're a team coming off four conference wins last year. So just trying to learn and get better when we come into this game. Can we find some positives? Can we get better in these five minute stretches? That's going to be the key with the conference road games coming up. Yeah, and absolutely. He talked about how this type of game, this type of play, this type of look, will prepare them for James Madison that he's number one in their conference. And um, again, he said that his players want to play these type of games and want to play in these type of environments. So it's important that um, when they do come and make notes after the game, okay, what can we do better? What, how can we take this into our conference play? Well, what has gone right today for Coastal Carolina in a name, Aaron Freeman. We're going to take a look at some highlights from the first half and start with Freeman, who has 13 of the 17 points for Coastal. There she is in the paint. And she's just been, so, look at her, calling for the ball, she's unafraid to drive into the land of the Giants. She's just been determined to score this entire game. I've seen her on the drive, she's improvised. She's been the lone offensive threat for Coastal Carolina, so quick to get into the paint. Yeah, definitely, again, we can just tell her speed. There she is, shooting a three, and again, just being super productive. Defensively, it's been a block party for South Carolina. They have 12. Again, we talked about that coming in. They're leading the nation in blocks. Look at just long, lengthy, athletic bodies. It's hard to um, block. It's hard to stop that. That last play where Aaliyah Boston is coming in and covering from a, a transition play to block the shot. And after the blocks, 
It's been a transition game for South Carolina. 13 fast break points today. Again, transition is the key to their game. Um, get the ball out and get it get it out early. And you have multiple players that are bringing it down the floor. You have post players, you have guards, um, but they, again, keeping their eyes up to finish the basket. A couple of nice defensive plays in the first half from Letitia and me here. This one leads the transition scoring, and then again, the quick hands from me here. Yeah, there she is again, shooting the gap, getting the position, just long athletic, being able to adjust her shot for the finish. Here are our first half stats. Quite a difference in field goal percentage. South Carolina 60% and Coastal Carolina just 20. And the Gamecocks have doubled up the shots in rebounding. Yeah, for sure. You know, in terms of just the field goal, like, Coastal Carolina are getting the shots. They're getting looks. I'm just not able to finish. And Barney has knocked down a couple threes, or two threes um, for this game. and. It's just important that while they get in their looks, they got to be able to finish. Coastal, Coastal your player to watch was Asia Blunt. A slow first half, one for seven, and it seems like she was really affected by the size yeah, yeah, of yeah. the defenders for South Carolina. Yeah, definitely affected by the size. As you can see, that again, even though it doesn't show up on the stat sheet, she's working with Boston in the post. They're continuing to, the, the referees are continuing to warn them, hey, three seconds in the paint, watch your, watch your three seconds. Um, she's just been not able to have it connect for this game, but Freeman has definitely stepped up. Let's see if they can get Blunt going in the second half. First team all Sun Belt selection last season. Second in the conference is scoring over 19 per game. Here she is in the paint, spinning on Boston. Again, it's the height of Boston that has bothered her. Boston going 6'5", Blunt just 5'11". Yeah, definitely have seen a lot of that this, this entire game. She gets the ball, but just, again, unable to connect through the size. Well, Cook is able to connect. She hits the three, the senior guard from Toledo, Ohio. It's good to see those shots fall for her. Um, we talked about her inconsistency from the three-pointer, uh, three-point shot, and she even talked about that in her post game. Uh, she's, she's making them uh, in practice, but being able to transition to that to the game has been a little tough, so that's good to see her be able to knock that shot down. It's been happening for her lately. She's now up to 37% from three on the season coming into today. That's a good nice. look Nice, beautiful to pick and roll. Beautiful pick and roll. Just great shot, got great look by Freeman um, to be able to see the open man and for her to finish. And an equally <laughs> great look from Fletcher to Saxton. They have nice back-to-back -back plays really for nice back-to-back -back possessions really for both teams. Freeman checked by Beal. Fletcher the other way up to Cook. And she's blocked from behind by DeAsia Richardson. Looks like DeAsia picked up the foul. It's a second on Richardson, the senior guard from North Carolina. Naya Barney getting a, some instruction from Coach Pedersen. They'd like to get Barney going as well. She hasn't scored yet. Barney averages 10.4 per game. Cook hits the first. Another look at the Gamecocks again, out in transition. Here's Barney, Beal. Maybe the reason why she hasn't scored yet today. And a turnover. It looks like a little miscommunication in the post area. Barney, the only freshman on Coastal Carolina. She's a redshirt freshman. She transferred from Northern Iowa, but it's a veteran team. Cook for three. No good, Fletcher skies for the rebounds. Cook, another opportunity, but lost the handle. They swing it around to Beal. Too strong. It's tapped back to Boston. Again, third. And that's gonna be an offensive foul on Zaya Cook. Zaya picks up her first. Still three opportunities yeah, on that just, offensive yeah. possession, Brett. Yeah, and again, that's what we talked about before coming into the game. They have so many uh, abilities. 
They're, they have such a presence with rebounds, defensive and offensive rebounds, that you know that, that accounts for so many of their points and accounts for why they're um, they're winning these games. Barney, who has four years of eligibility, someone that Coach Pedersen wants to build around. There's a turnover and a steal from Zaya Cook. Cook will take it herself off the glass and in. Nice finish and transition. You saw almost like a two on one. A possession right there, or two-on-one look and transition. Good read and good finish by Zai Cook. Crafty finish. She has great body control, too. Yeah, she does. She has some hang time uh, in the air sometimes. She's, like you said, adjusting she against the defense. Pass to Richardson. Richardson, no good. And Boston gets the rebound. Cook passed on the three. Boston lowers the shoulder, and it's stuck. <laughs> Don't see that too often. <laughs> the old wedge, yeah. basketball in the rim. And a quick whistle and a foul that's going to be called on Beyonce Carter. That's her third. Carter did not play against UNCW and has played very limited minutes in December, saw a lot of time in November. She's been out there today for Shanta Clears. Boston drains the first. Boston has another double double. Number 68 for her career. Her eighth of the season. Quickly approaching the school's all-time record, which is 72. No doubt she'll break that this season. Oh, yeah, no doubt. No doubt that she will. Held by Sheila Foster. Played from 1979 to 1982. Richardson, the floater. It's short. Cardozo pulls down the rebound. Here come the Gamecocks in transition. Cook. The feed to Saxton. Wow, what a crafty finish by Saxton. And good look, good pass from Zaya Cook. Freeman on the drive. She draws the foul. Great drive again by Freeman. She has been relentless this entire game on the offensive side. I mean, she's unafraid, like we mentioned before, to go in and drive into the land of giants. And she knows how to maximize on the um, the speed of the game and transition, instead of always slowing it down, she's going to definitely take it to the basket. Saxton picks up her first. So the assist total before pop on the screen. 16 for the Gamecocks, just one for Coastal Carolina. Second, Freeman comes from a basketball family. Her father, Ali, played at Arkansas. She's a sophomore from Little Rock, Arkansas. Very good freshman season for Coastal Carolina. Only a sophomore. Both she and Barney, a couple players you can build around if you're Coach Pedersen. They trap Beal. And there's the steal for Richardson. Here's Anaya Barney. Richardson makes her move, stops, pops, and hits. Nice shot. Great read by the defense, or great read by Richardson to read the defense to know that, hey, right now I need to pull up to shoot the jumper, and it's a great look. Tipped around by Watkins. Aloto again, consistent offensive rebounds, second chance points, and you end up with scoring when Carolina is in the battle of offensive rebounds. It generally always works it into their favor. Watkins has eight. She had eight on Sunday against Charleston Southern. Freeman passed on the three. Instead, she'll drive. And we'll go the other way. 
little time out on the floor. And we'll take the break as well. 4.55 left to go in the third quarter. South Carolina leads Coastal Carolina 68-23. An early Christmas celebration today for Gamecock fans. South Carolina leads Coastal Carolina 68 to 23. The Gamecock shooting 59%, just 21% for the Shanta Clears. It's the first season for Coach Pedersen at Coastal Carolina, replacing Jada Williams, who's now an assistant at Ole Miss. A difficult start to the season. They dropped four of their first five, three of those at SEC and ACC opponents, opening at Georgia and Kentucky, and then later at Wake Forest, but they've turned it around, won four of their last five coming into today. For Coach Pedersen, Brett, returning seven players that saw action last season, including their top three scorers, six new additions to the team this season that he brought in. All transfers, two of them grad transfers, no true freshmen were added, and just one redshirt freshman. So it's, it's a veteran roster. Maybe they can win now if it comes together correctly, but it's a process with the new staff and putting it all together, and they'll be able to get some talented freshmen in next season. Yeah, as you mentioned before, earlier this year um, when Coach got the job, he said um, taking the transfer route um, because the portal was, you know, pretty much empty, that was the only choice, you know, to go take the transfer route to get some um, experience. But as we talked about before, you know, it, every coach goes through this season where they're rebuilding, particularly when they're coming to the program if they didn't um, inherit uh, players, so to speak. But he said that was a choice that he had at the moment, and he rolled with it, and he's going to continue to build his program off the players that he has now. Richardson can't get the roll. It's Cardozo who comes up with the rebound. Here's Chloe Kitts. A nice move around Ricarte. Can't convert. Well, he said, uh, look, I'm a huge high school guy. I always thought you built through high school. But by the time we got to Coastal, the high school prospects were gone. So that by that point, they had to go the transfer route. Took two of his players from Lander with him. And me here. Some contact there, and the foul's going to be called on, I believe, DeAsia Richardson. She'll pick up her third. But getting back to Coastal, you know, he said, we took the two kids from Landers, so and now we're sitting here at eight or nine players. He had to go through the portal, hoping that that's the only time in his coaching career that he has to do that. He talked about players from South Carolina. He said, Dawn always gets the best players in South Carolina, and, and we want to do the same. They actually think they have the best post player coming in next season. Yeah, he talked about what um, his plan for recruitment for next um, next season and keeping Carolina girls here uh, in the state and what South Carolina just women's basketball has done for the state, has done for women's basketball in general, uh, but particularly for other schools um, and encouraging other players to run the state here to play. So much admiration for Coach Staley. Another block for the Gamecocks. This time it's Watkins. He even mentioned about um, how Carolina has transformed basketball and getting SC kids um, when that wasn't a thing before. Um, and he said they're benefiting all SEC school or schools such as uh, Coastal and Lander are benefiting from South Carolina, what South Carolina do, is doing. They're benefiting from South Carolina wins. More great defense from me here, but here's Barney the other way with the steal. She'll stop for three. No good. Offensive board, Ricarte from deep. Nice shot by Ricarte. That start from early from a possession with Barney shooting the gap, getting the steal, getting the rebound, and now resulting in a three-point play. Ricarte shoots it 43% from behind the arc. She's a 6'2 center. She's an interesting player. Came with Coach Pedersen to Coastal from Lander. Hall trying to respond. And it's Watkins who draws the foul. The foul's gonna be on Ricarte. Ricarte picks up her third. Miriam's an interesting story as well, Ricarte. We asked Coach Pedersen how we got her, a player from Spain to a Division II team at Lander. He said he tries to watch as much film as it's possible when he recruits and he got an email. And watched the film on Miriam. He saw she's skilled. He asked for more film. The one D1 school that was interested was Maine. So he thought, well, that's my advantage. A girl from Spain might not want to go to Maine where it's cold. And he stuck with the recruitment process and was able to get her to go to Lander. Got her all off of film. 
So when she, she first got there, got into the gym, he thought he had a post player, and all of a sudden she, she's, she's, she's threes. bombing threes. Yeah. And it's, it's like, no, I have, I have a European stretch yeah. four. <laughs> but she's been great for him, and was an all-conference player on the D2 level, and now filling it up at the D1 level. There is Ricarte once again. There she is. It's great to see her again. Knock down those trees, knock down, knock down those shots that we talked about before, or that she has history of being able to knock down. Aaron Freeman picks up the foul. Asia Blunt checks back in. And Ami here will head to the line for South Carolina, the senior forward from Canada. 68% free throw shooter coming into today. Misses the first. Me here with eight points on the day. Did not play against Charleston Southern. Had just two points on the road trip at South Dakota State. And she's got nine. Blunt. She'll drive on Cardozo. How about that move Great from finish. Asia Blunt? <laughs> used her body to get some separation. And as you mentioned, Brett, the finish. Again, great finish by Asia Blunt. Just reading the defense, seeing her advantage on Cardozo, and taking that to the basket and finish. It's great to see her. Again, there's no way you can lead the, her team in points and not be able to finish. She, we know that she's able to do that. We haven't seen that much in this game thus far, but great to see that now she's on the scoreboard. She was second in the entire conference of scoring last season, finishes the three-point play. And she's had some monster performances. Even this year, 20 against Wake, 19 on Sunday against UNCW. She had 41 against Arkansas State last season, season yep. in the conference tournament. Ami here, kicks it out to Hall in the corner. And we'll go the other way. Coach Staley not pleased with that possession. Still the lead is 75 to 32, heavily in favor of South Carolina. Ricarte has had the hot hand this quarter. There's a steal from Watkins. I think she saw her. She would have got the ball to her a little bit earlier. Um, she had the right idea, just uh, for execution. Chloe Kitts. Watkins. Cardozo falling backwards. <laughs> nice fade away. Nice fade away and finish. Goes the junior center from Brazil. And some sloppy play from both teams. Whose ball is it? It's Coastal's ball. Deasia Richardson will check back in for the shots. She replaces Anaya Barney. Barney has not scored in this one. Team's third leading scorer, 10 and a half per game. A me here, now checking Freeman. Ricarte, a terrific nice, feed. Nice back door. And the finish from Adams. Nice assist. Good job by Adams to continue again to move without the ball against the zone. Um, again, she found an open gap. She got it to connect, and they were rewarded for it with two points. A me here. Weaves her way inside. Oh, way to end the quarter. Nice athletic move to just Euro hop, Euro step through the defense for a beautiful finish. Tisha Ami here. Two there, one, two, and finish. She's able to beat the buzzer. Ami here has 11. South Carolina leads Coastal Carolina 79-34. Getting ready for the start of the fourth quarter here in Columbia. The Gamecocks lead the shot 79 to 34. It's been a balanced offensive effort for South Carolina. Brett, they have four players in double figures in points. Boston has 11, Cook has 14, Amihir 11, and Watkins has 12. 
again, we talked about before, just bench production and being able to have an ability to score depending on the look, despite the look, despite what the defense is giving you, despite um, what unit or who you are on the floor with your teammates. Um, I think that's just a very important for to see the versatility and ability to be able to score. And it has ranged from three-pointer to jump shots to, to layups. Aaron Freeman leading the way for Coastal. She has 15. Ricarte asserted herself in the third quarter, hit a couple of threes. She has six. The one nice thing, if you're Coach Pedersen, Brett, and the Shants, their shooting percentage has improved each quarter really rough in the first. 13.6%, they were three for 22, but up to 27 in the second, up to 37 in the third. Yeah, I, and I think that's a lot have been attributed to Freeman. She has just been continuing to keep her team going and keeping them excited and encouraging them to be able to shoot, just like um, Ricarte has been able to knock down, come back and knock down two, two threes. We did not see that earlier in the game, so I really accredit Freeman to just keeping, um, even though with the block, again, she's just unafraid to go in there. She's just been, having, been carrying the energy for this team and has, I think just, that just has been contagious to her other teammates. It's the third block for Sanaya Fagan. 15th block on the day for the Gamecocks. Blunt, no good. Offensive board for Adams. Richardson stops, fires from three, too strong. Rundman fought for the rebound and said it's Johnson. What a feed. What a pass. Beautiful pass by Johnson to see the floor. And not only that, for Sanaya Fagan to keep going, to keep running. She would not have completed that play if she was would have stopped in transition. Another steal for Ashlyn Watkins. Thompson's in for the Gamecocks, wears number zero in white. Watch her behind the arc. This is Olivia Thompson, now Raven Johnson. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Cooper, an open look. In and out. The offensive rebound and the putback for Ashlyn Watkins. Great putback for Watkins. Again, to just go up and just aggressively grab the ball. It's like, when you grab the ball like that, you know you want it. And again, she was awarded for it by the putback. Converted it to two points. Freeman missed the floater. It's Cooper the other way. She feeds Johnson. Thompson, an open look. That's good. Great shot by Olivia Thompson. Like you see, the bench just erupted to see her score. Great shot. Fourth three-pointer of the season for Thompson. She's now four for 13. All of those shot attempts have been from behind the arc. Blunt, back iron. Again, the Gamecocks are running. There's Fagan. Great finish. Great finish, and again, another assist, another pass by Johnson, looking up the floor, doing what point guards do, getting in the basketball at the right time and in the right location in first for the first players to finish. Gamecocks showing no mercy. They lead Coastal Carolina 88-34. Seven fifty-five left to go. South Carolina leads Coastal Carolina, eighty-eight to thirty-four. Brett, when we talked to Coach Pedersen, he told us it's going to be hard this year going up against South Carolina because we don't have the depth yet, and they're the number one team in the country. Can, can we come in and can we cause some problems for them on offense? Maybe limit their points in the paint and transition. He said it starts with those two things. If you can't keep them off the offensive boards, you don't have a chance, and if you don't keep them out of transition, you don't have a chance. Well. South Carolina has done really well in transition. 21 assists. We've seen the pinpoint passing from Raven Johnson and, of course, points in the paint. They lead 56 to 18. Yeah, and again, as he talked about that before, uh, points in the paint, um, it's just it's, it's, tough to, it's, it's tough to guard if you don't slow them down. And once they get the ball, again, it's really tough to, to, to slow them down. You've been impressed with the passing of Johnson with five assists. Oh, yeah, I, I think that's... Uh, uh, the role of a point guard is to be able to see the floor and again get the get her get the, your teammates the ball at the right time and the right at the right right location. 
And again, kudos to the post players who have been continuing to move and run and meet the pass where she is sending them. But great court vision by Johnson to get the ball to the people that need it. Turnover on the travel. There's Thompson in the corner. Too strong. Cooper gets the offensive board. And she draws the foul. Foul's going to be on Helena De La Ruel. Her second. And they send Talasia Cooper to the line. Cooper coming into today just 39% from the free throw line. She hits the first. Had a season I 14 on Sunday against CSU. She was Brett's player to watch today. Added three assists and three steals in that one as well. And she looked really good running the point when Kiara Fletcher wasn't available in the second half. Yeah, I, I agree. She just assumed the role. Um, she was able to, again, just be the floor general for Carolina. Didn't cause a lot of turnovers when she was in the game. Um, again, just a solid player, and I'm just excited to see what she's going to do throughout her career here. She finds Johnson, tried to get it inside to Fagan. Instead, it's a turnover. And De La Ruelle will bring it up for the Chance, the junior guard from France. Barney's had a tough day. 0 for 7 from the field. This is Simmons. Five seconds for Carter. That's taken away by Talasia Cooper. She bumped into De La Ruel. De La Ruel will pick up her third. And now mass substitutions for Coastal Carolina. Blunt back in, Ricarte, Freeman, Adams as well. And they're joined by DeAsia Richardson. Johnson on the drive. Dishes to Cooper with the reverse. <laughs> oh, what an athletic pass. Again, credit to Raven Johnson for seeing her. Credit to Cooper for continuing to move a nice, just crafty athletic finish. Cooper was a 3,000 point scorer at the high school level. Blunt can't finish on the other end. Now they surround Johnson. I don't think Johnson realized how many Coastal Carolina jerseys she had around her at the time. And there were three of them. Blunt, she's short. Here's Sanaya Fagan. Kitts will be called for the travel. Chloe Kitts, the Matt. Max Preps Jr. All-American second team member. His U.S. national team experience. She was on the under-18 team. Had a great debut against CSU, but it's going to take some time, Brett, yeah. to work her way in. Just a high school age player. Yeah, for sure. We talked about a little, being a little nervous in our press conference from last game and how the team just rallied around her, you know, just reassured, you know, that everything's going to be okay and that, you know, she's going to be fine. So, looks like her transition's been pretty smooth. Um, but, um, of course, you know, we're excited to see how she matches up in SEC play. Well, Stanley mentioned about Chloe that, you know, as a high school player, she has the confidence to want to come here and play a role for this team, a player that can Shoot the ball from mid-range, from three. She's a quick learner. They're expanding her package on the fly, and she's fared pretty well. She's unafraid. Don said, hey, we need that. We need the shooting. Yeah. Richardson gets the second. Looks like there's some full court press. Hits, feeds Watkins. Off the rim, no good. 
Here's the speedy Aaron Freeman. A great feed to Adams. Great pass by Aaron Freeman. Like, great pass, great court vision. Good job by Adams to continue to run the floor to be rewarded with the pass and the finish. Kitts, no good. Watkins can't hit from close. That's going to be out of bounds off of Ashlyn Watkins. And it will take us to immediate timeout. 4.47 left to go in the fourth quarter. Ashland has 14, South Carolina has 91. They lead Coastal Carolina 91-38. Welcome back to Columbia, 447 left to play. South Carolina leads Coastal Carolina 91 to 38. The size differential, Brett, it's been a really tough matchup for the Shanta Clears, but they don't mind. They wanted to play this game. We talked to Coach Pedersen about this difficult schedule, and he said when he first came to Coastal Carolina, he said, I asked the players when I first arrived, tell me everything you want out of your experience at Coastal. And across the board, the players said they want to play a real schedule, beating a team 120 to 30, playing a non-scholarship team. It's not fun. They want to play power fives, and they hadn't played many over the last four years combined, so we really wanted to schedule fun games, and so they've been good experiences for us, even in a loss. Yeah, and he talked about how his coaching style has changed, how you come in as a coach with a particular vision, and you want to do this, you want to do that, but having the, giving the players some form of autonomy, too, as to getting them involved in the process of their experience. And also, with that, they also can hold them accountable um, with, hey, you wanted the schedule, I'm expecting you to play. I'm going to give you everything, every resource there's, there I can possibly give um, to help prepare you for these games and this experience that you want. And so I think it's pretty cool that a coach keeps their players involved in that process and have them um, have a say in their experience so they can walk away and say, hey, you know, I, I did something pretty special here at Coastal. Yeah, they talked about, you know, they've improved the locker room over there. They've added some nice amenities to right. the program. And he said, hey, in return, between the lines, we'll get you these things, but you have to work as hard as you've ever worked in your life. That's the right. deal. Yep. And he asked, hey, you know, do you want to come here to just go to the beach? Or do you want to come here and have a, a good experience you want to have on your – um, on your experience list that you played the number one team in the nation. Um, what, what it is that you want out of this program, and we can create a schedule around to get you back. Cox continue to get great looks inside. Fagan is fouled. It's going to be the second on Amaya Adams. So Sanaya Fagan will head to the line. Sanaya, who did not play against Charleston Southern, First team All-American as a senior in high school. Number four overall player in the class of 2021. Comes from a great basketball family. Her mom played at Washington, her dad at Morgan State. I see that in her game. Yeah, for sure. And she's one of those players, again, along with Talasia Cooper, to be able to watch. Um, she's had so much, she's improved so much from her freshman year. Um, and again, she takes, takes experience takes experience and continue to develop as a player. And again, she's definitely someone you want to keep your eye on for her time here at Carolina. Freeman hit the deck on that position, possession, excuse me. There's no call. Cooper uh, coast to on coast. the drive, <laughs> takes great. it herself. Yeah, great job for her just handling the, the, the traffic early on in the front court or in the back court and continue to take it on to the, to the basket for a finish. Here's Aaron Freeman, she's played a ton of minutes today. The floater, no good. Wrestling match for the rebound is won by Cooper. Here's Kitts. Fagan from the baseline. That's a nice look for Fagan. She definitely has a capability. That shot looks very, very good on her to be able to not only um, score with her back against the basket, but hey, step out and shoot her uh, a two-point jumper. Fagan has nine. The career high is 15. That was in the opener against ETSU. Here's Ashlyn Watkins. <laughs> Great finish by Watkins. I think some of the crowd was standing up again, hoping to see if it was going to result in another dunk. 16 points. So that's for Watkins, the new career high. Fagan has nine. Timeout called by 
Coastal Carolina. We've seen South Carolina impose their will defensively in this one. It's such a balanced team. They want to get after it, be disruptive. They've been imposing their defensive will today. So many blocked shots against the Chanticleers. They've blocked 16, Brett. Yeah, again, as we talked about before, you know, that's what to be expected about from the team, the number one team in the nation in blocks. Um, you expect to see that type of activity uh, on the stat sheet at the end of the game. Again, just as a result of their long athletic um, presence on the floor. And again, it's just hard to guard. Coastal has worked hard for their 38 points. Coach Pedersen told us, you know, you'll see effort out there regardless of what the score is going to be. You know, we work hard, it's just who we are. You watch us practice, watch us playing games, the effort is always there. And he's absolutely right. We, I don't think we've seen anything less. And like I said, I think Fr Freeman really ignited that for Coastal. Um, even Blunt, um, while she hasn't had the most productive game in scoring, she has been continuing to work um, every time she's a game in the post. Open look for Ricarte is no good. Under two to go. Even Adams, she would had moments where she, again, just crashing the board, being present, moving. You don't find them standing around too much. They're constantly, again, chasing white jerseys, chasing the basketball, chasing the boards, following up with the shots. Fagan trying to impose her will. Out of bounds at a day with South Carolina. Fagan, 9.6 rebounds, three blocks. She's been great off the bench. Here she is in the paint, off the glass and in. Nice pass again. Great look, good finish by Fagan. We expect to see that more from her. Fagan has 11. There's another rebound for Sanaya. She'll bring it up herself. Raven Johnson will use some clock. 100 points scored for the Gamecocks. Looking for more. And one. Oh, Sanaya Fagan taking over in the fourth quarter. Great finish by Fagan. Fagan has 13. Foul's going to be called on Ariel Vidrell Balinga. Naya Fagan to the line to finish the three-point play, an 85% free throw shooter. Back iron. One minute to go from Columbia. Adams tried to get it to Freeman. It was deflected out of play. <laughs> Hundred and two points scored by the Gamecocks is a season high. They scored 123 against Benedict, but that was the exhibition. So highest point total in the regular season this, this year, 102. Nice play by Blunt, even though she wasn't able to connect. Again, that's something that she's really been doing all game, just trying her best to get position, um, reading the defense going up and under, fake here, fake there. One to, now she's down. to the line. Great free throw shooter, 92% coming in, but misses the first. And she's been held well under her season scoring average, averaging 17 and a half per game. She only has five. Make that six. Player who has scored in double digits in all but one game this season. Hasn't been able to solve South Carolina defense. Speaking of defense, there's Adams 
and a turnover. Freeman. Spin not in her favor. Again, how Freeman started the game is how she ended it. Again, just aggressive play. Um, again, trying to get her teammates on the back. Get her teammates going. Raven Johnson can dribble out the clock. Coach Patterson and his squad gave a great effort against Coach Daly and her Gamecocks, but they're going to fall 102 to 39. Season high in points for South Carolina, and they were one away, Brett, from a team record in blocks. That team record is 17 against App State back in 2019. They had 16 today against Coastal. Yeah, again, coming in, that's what we were saying before, that they're leading to, um, they're, they're, they're leading the nation in blocks, and it's tough to really um, be able to, to, to stop it. And again, they're operating in the, the usual Carolina basketball play that puts them, again, the number one in the nation. South Carolina improves to 12 and 0 overall. Coastal Carolina drops to 5 and 6. Brett, your final thoughts as we head into conference play? Um, again, just a, a great, um, great game overall by both teams to just close out their non-conference play, close out this chapter to now be able to shift focus to to their conference. But Car uh, Coastal Carolina, again, just taking this experience into their conference play and being able to use what they've learned here. Um, again, bench points by Carolina on the bench, bench uh, and everywhere across the board for the number one team in the nation. Next up for Coastal, Thursday, December 29th at James Madison for the Gamecocks, Thursday, December 29th at A&M. For Brett Ball and the rest of our crew, I'm Dave Weinstein saying so long from Columbia, South Carolina, a winner, 102 to 39.